Okay, now what I've done is I've deployed my tipping bucket rain gauge. Back in the shop, I made sure that the uh, rubber band was removed from the tipping bucket mechanism. I had hooked it up to my logger to make sure that it worked. Um, I've driven my remote mast into the ground here. I've got a level on it to make sure that it's level when I put it in. I've secured the rain gauge to the mast using the two hose clamps provided with the rain gauge. You can see my sensor cable here. This cable is going to be secured to the mast and as well I'm going to dig a trench and bury my cable. But I'm going to do it inside of a piece of a conduit to uh, protect it. And I can run this conduit right up the mast as well. Uh, you need to have uh, either a plumber's snake to run the wire for the sensor through the conduit or you can have split conduit. You can have metal conduit. It's just we recommend using some type of conduit to protect the wire from little animals chewing on it and whatnot. We've had a lot of people call back from the field saying that bears or rats or beavers or some kind of animal has, you know, interrupted their uh, recordings and most of the time that's due to the cable being chewed through. So a piece of conduit, a trench, tie wraps, and we're good to go. This actual site, again, is not the correct way to deploy a rain gauge. I'm way too close to the trees that are around me, as well as the tripod. Um, this needs to be in a location, as we specify in our manual, so that any kind of shedding from objects that are higher than it, shedding of water, that is, will not come into the collector and actually uh, give you a false rain measurement. Um, you need to have the thing deployed correctly to get good measurements.